I'm forever blowing bubbles. La dee 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 da dum. Well, yes, there we are. We're live. Sorry, it was me late. I suppose technically Eric may have been considered to be late. You know, Eric, late? What? Um, but no, I was uh, I was on a call. I was on a Skype call. How are you all? Hope you're all doing rather marvellously well. I see, oh, Michael's here. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hello, Alex. Hello, Todd. Steve, Dario, Anita, Mark, Ohad, or Ohad. I hope that I'm not messing everybody's names up. Mark, Magnus. Cohen, David, Adam, Marvin, oh, g moving faster than I can keep up. Keith, um, oh, you heard me singing I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. <laughs> Media Collection, Tom, Paul, Mateus, Paul, Alexi, Ken, I hope I'm getting everybody. Another Tom, more Tom, Ian, Daniel, Mark with a K, Mark with a C, Philip, Stephanie, wow, Rick, Vinny, Alex, hello. So many great people. Wow. How are you all? Hello in Germany, in Philly, and in Quebec. Um, hey, Tutori. Um, uh, good morning to you as well. Um, uh, yes, good day. Um, uh, 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 I am doing marvelously well, Chris Jordan. How are you? Uh, you need more monitors. <laughs> I do actually the folk house. Oh, everybody keeps asking me us. We do still have the folk house. Yes, we are still using them. We're actually down on the ground down there. We're just waiting to get the big stands. So we want to put the moat the the monitors in there, and we just need the bigger stands to get them on the outside because they have to be a certain distance apart, and we want to get them perfect and you name it. So they are still here, and yes, we are going to be using. It. I am good, Baz. How are you? Hello, Martin. Uh, Winterstein Smith or Winterstein Smith. I don't know what uh, uh, country you're in. Hey, Johnny. Hey, yep. A producer's never late, Eric Baggins, nor is he early. He del delays precisely the amount he needs to. Uh, interesting. <laughs> How are you all? I'm very excited because we're going to do um, a little bit of rock and roll here. And Anita asked me whether we were going to do good loving. And yes, we are, Anita. So we have Robert John and the Wreck, good loving up here. Um, so, should we take a listen to the track? Tom, am I going to give you the folk cows? No. Unfortunately, I am not giving them to anybody. I am definitely keeping them. Um, okay. I want to listen to this song, and I want you to listen to it too. So let me go to the double camera. Hey, up here. How are you all? As you can see, this song has got a lot of schnizzle going on. Oh, and please, as Sean would say, please like and share. So if you can hit that like button while you're here, remember, we're going to give away an Academy membership at the end, and we're going to give away some courses. Um, actually, I believe that we have a uh, Mixing in the Box course for those of you that don't already have it. Um, what course are we going to give away, Matt? All right, let's have a listen to the song. Now, remember what at the moment we've got going on here is everything is at zero everything all the faders if you see this all the faders at zero and nothing is panned properly so i'm going to press play on the track and i am just as it's going down i'm going to start rebalancing and listening this is really important to me no no application of any eq no compression see it's all here it's all blank no effects nothing so this is just the recording and I will tweak it and get it to a place where I like the sound. Now, there is some snare samples in here. There is um, some effects um, that we printed on the reverbs and stuff, which was kind of fun. Uh, there's, some, there's some fun stuff. But anyway, I will tweak it as we go. I am giving away a membership, Baza, at the end. So stick around. So please hit that like button. And if you can, share it, comment after the video finishes, all of that good stuff. Here we go.
Fantastic. All right. So many of you know, and it's funny because Anita said, is this going to be good loving last night? We, so um, those of you that are Academy members, and of course, I see quite a lot of you on here, will know that the uh, the website that we have has a chat function. So quite often I'll pop in there and just chat and everybody's chatting with each other and sharing information. It's really fantastic. So if you're not already an Academy member, that's a pretty huge deal that you can talk to other Academy members live and, and share ideas. And I know lots of people do, and it's all rather wonderful. Um, so one of the things is Anita said when I said to her, uh, said to the chat, everybody in the chat room last night, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna do a rock song today because you know we love David, we love the Workday release, but let's let's be honest, this month has been the Workday release month. I mean, he's been in like fifteen live streams or so it feels, and the remix competition. So I wanted to get some good old fashioned, loud, noisy rock and roll with some guitars." Um, What's making the bubbling effect? Uh, that was a keyboard at the end, I believe. Or was it a guitar? You know, I don't remember now. Let's have a listen. Oh, it's a keyboard, um, but it's also going through reverb. You hear that? So, yeah, it's, uh, I believe that was his Nord. Um, Steve uses a Nord. Um, so it's rather wonderful. But yeah, this is a totally retro. I went for it completely. You know, I, I sort of had that, you know, black is black. I want my baby back. You know, that kind of bass sound. That's the bass sound I wanted. If you go to the break section here. Don't take my money. Don't take really went 60s as much as I could on this. Well, to me, that's when no one told me about her, the way she lied. You know, she's not there by the zombies. That was what this was. You hear that? You know, but no one told me about her. So it sort of had, it was capturing all of those kind of feelings of the classic kind of 60s songs. Um, anyway. You know, so this one, I think, is it, it should be 
a couple of people are being very complimentary about it. Um, yeah, she's great since she went away. Exactly, Adam. Um, being very complimentary about it, and and I, I did put some, um, I did put some, um, you know, samples in here for those of you that want to use them on the drums. Um, oh, and basically, Matt, by the way, is telling us that we're going to give away the mixing rock with Auric Wild Volume Two. Um, is that the is that the Galacticon one? Is that it? Is that it? Is that what it is? Do, 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 do. Anyway, it's an Auric Wild course that we're giving away today. So there are um, there are some drum samples in here. If you want the drums to poke their head out a little bit more and you want to mess with those, you can. But let's have a listen to individual elements, just have some fun. So here's the kick in. Um, there was an RE20. So I'm, I'm going to play all of the drum mics. Uh, 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 uh. So there's a lot of different stuff for you to mess with here, tons and tons of stuff. But here's all the live mics. Now, I mic the side of the snare as well, just so you know. Um, here's all the toms. Ride, overheads. Now, we did, we recorded this hybrid and they weren't, there was an issue with bussing. So the reason why I say that is that's the reason why there are, believe it or not, um, split up microphones. There's top and bottom toms. There's two um, two inputs on the condensers uh, and the dynamic on the hi-hat. So it's an interesting situation. Normally I wouldn't do those. Those would be bust on in the, on the console, but there was, a, there was a problem at the time on the console where we couldn't bust the mic pre's. So that's the reason why there's a separate dynamic microphone and condenser, which is a 57 and a condenser. That's the reason why there's top and bottom toms. So it looks like there's more toms than there really are. Uh, like, so you've got like the rack tom, top and bottom, and you've got um, the floor tom, top and bottom. So that, if those of you that are going to mix this are going to be like, huh, why is that? Well, that's the reason why it was a bussing issue on the console. So normally what I would do is I'd sum the top and bottom mics. I'd sum the two hi-hat mics together, but we couldn't in this particular reason. So this is all the live drum mics. Well, Jonathan, good question. So the side snare is like a really super accurate sound of the snare. It's a great way to get snare samples, for instance. Um, it's not too flattering when there's a lot of stuff that's bleeding, but have a listen. Here's just the side snare mic. It was partially my kit. It was kind of a hodgepodge of different elements of drum kit. We built a sort of an ideal drum kit. So for single hits, it's pretty nice. It's very aggressive on the transient there, you can hear. Thank you, I got a couple of PG tips. Michael was telling me that PG is very expensive in Scotland. Um, so he's gonna, he's gonna send me some Scottish tea. I want some Scottish tea. And next time I wanna be Michael, I wanna be drinking it here. So here you can, there's obviously a lot of cymbal bleed in there, but you can get an idea of how that. It's got some good aggression. It's, you know, it's a good sound. Um, and I do like it a lot. It, it's, it just adds a different kind of element. Now, the traditional snare top is a 57. Picking up quite a lot of the ring on of the actual drum itself. Uh, it sounds like it was probably my superphonic. And then the snare bottom.
as is typical, um, they sound good. They're a little dull. Put all three together. I'm good, Rick. I've got my cup of tea, but thanks for the offer of the coffee. Now, so what's interesting is this snare sample here is the, actually the snare itself. So what we did, and I highly recommend you do this, is at the end of the recording of doing the drum take, I got the drummer to do individual hits of the snare, individual hits of toms, individual. So if I needed to get a sample of the real snare, I did it. So that's what this is. What's great about it is, of course, what's great about it, of course, is it's in the same key. The ring, everything is the same. Obviously, it's a little machine-like being a sample that's pasted around, but we kept the dynamics. Blend it with the others. It's sort of, it's like a better way of doing a parallel because it's exactly the same snare. Put, the, put all the elements together. So there are other samples you can mess with, but of course they're going to be a different, um, you know, a different kind of, you know, element. Now I used a thing called the D28. This is a sample that I've used a lot, um, which you should definitely, you know, if you're Academy members, you have access to it. But this one's pitched down. Have a listen. Listen to that. It's ridiculous. Uh, what, like I was saying, it's a snare, snare top and snare bottom. It's four, by the way. Snare top and snare bottom, and then a side side um, miking. So there's three live tracks on the snare. Typically used two, but I put a third one on. So this here, and again, uh, again, uh, for those that are asking about it, these are here for you to use in a mix. So you can do, like, whatever you want. Those are double hits, they're flams. Can you hear them? That's why it sounds like a double hit, but it is because it is a double hit, it's a flam. So the reason why I did that is because I wanted to add, in the final mix, I wanted to add some body. So all of these elements are here for you to mess with and do whatever you like. If you don't want to use them, you don't have to use them. They're all like different elements that you can blend in. Yeah, like Jonathan's saying, so you can then run parallel compression on the samples and squash the heck out of them. Exactly. Because that's the actual live recorded snare, um, you know, because that's the live recorded one, you can squash the snizzle out of it and add energy. It's a very good point that he's making. So what I could do on that, on that sample of itself, it's the actual snare itself, is I could grab, I could do two things. I could grab an L2 or MV2, for instance, and just even it out. So if we got the MV2 here, for instance, we... So that brings out all the character. The ring is exaggerated. The transient's killed. But that could go underneath the real snare, blend it in like this. But as Jonathan's pointing out, when you parallel the sample of itself, remember, once again, just to be really clear, that is the actual live snare. At the end of the recording of the drum track, I got him to do some single hits. So that's the live snare, but it doesn't have the bleed of the cymbals in. So it means I can go crazy on it. So that's quite hot at the moment, but I could bring it down. It's just a nice way of making it work. And the reason why I had this octave down one was so I could grab some EQ. I could grab, say we take a Poltec EQ like this and wanted to go to 100 hertz here. 
and boost it so there's just low end. Now we're adding some body and we could take that same Poltec, put it on the other version of the D28 and go to 8K and boost that. So now what we've got is some like top and bottom control of the snare. I believe this is 24 bit and 48K. Can take these elements out, go back to the live snare. Bring the parallel in. Then bring in the low sample. And then the high boosted sample. And that's a quick way. And again, trying to keep it sounding like the natural snare, but just adding to it. What do I want to add to it? Yep. Oh, yes. Just so David, David, um, as David Hammond is saying, all of these tracks here are in the Academy. So if you're <laughs> you can mention High Pass, George, it's OK. Um, so you can download these tracks in the Academy. Oh, so Galacticon. So what is volume two? What song is it, Matt? Uh, uh, uh. Now, when I was tracking live, I had the beauty of having an SPX90 and a 480 at the studio. So I printed those on the snare. A little bit too much, so we'll bring them down. What we're doing is we're doing the world's quickest drum blend here, just to get the drums. Then there's some rooms, there's actual samples of the rooms. So this is the live drums in the rooms. Don't really like them very much, but they're there for your perusal. And then the live sample, this is the live drums in the room. Bring that down, don't like it very much. I'm just do, making really quick decisions. Don't necessarily need any of this. Apparently he, uh, uh, Orion Shen dislikes the drum part based on listening to the snare. Okay, so now I'm just going to Put all those together. Let's see if we got an all drum group. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Okay, got to do a quick building on it. Okie dokie. Looks like we overdubbed a crash symbol. I love hearing that. I love hearing that air on the kick. Oh. Now, typically with things like fast shakers and stuff like that, I pan them away from the hi hat. So if I've got the pan, if I've got the hi hat panned in this instance to the right from the audience perspective, um, I'm going to put the shaker on the other side.
Now, just so you know, for all the Academy members and anybody that's going to join the Academy to download these multi-tracks, um, and bear in mind, there's 40 or 50 multi-tracks in here. So you're not just going to get this song. You're going to get like 40 or 50 of these songs. Um, we'll definitely put some more Robert John and the Wreck ones up there because they're very popular with everybody because obviously they're a phenomenal band. We also have um, some... Uh, we have some live stuff. Did we put up the Dick Wagner live songs? No. Okay, so we're going to have those coming up as well. Those feature like Brad uh, Whitford um, from Denny, uh, Danny Sarathin from Chicago, Brad Whitford from Aerosmith. There's a lot more really good stuff coming up for those of you that are into rock that you can mix as well. Anyway, um, so I've got two guitar players here. Now, this is something that might confuse you. There's two sets of identical guitars here. And that's because what I'll do, what I was doing on this mix is I was taking the um, the copy of the guitars and affecting it really heavily. So they're muted at the moment. We don't need to hear them. And for the same reason that we couldn't bus on the console, we um, we we have got a front and back mic. It was a small console, a uh, small co um, amp. It was actually the what's it called, the Roadie. It was the Carl Martin Roadie, which is fantastic. <laughs> Anita says there's 49 tracks in the academy at the moment, and as Sean says, please like and share. Uh, I recorded using Pro Tools. This was done on Pro Tools and it is being mixed on Pro Tools. This is entirely in the box. I'm super, it's funny you're joking about shakers. I'm super sensitive to shakers. It's like, uh, I think because I've still got a lot of high end up there. If they're too loud, it drives me nuts. <laughs> Close mic keyboards, a Nord going through, I believe it was a small Fender amp. The uh, guitar, the main lead guitar, is all going through the Carl Martin Rhodey amp. It's a really freaking amazing amp. It's like a little Marshall meets a Vox. I don't know what it is. It sounds phenomenal. <laughs>
cool. So I think that's sort of a, a listenable position now. So I'm actually putting out a video on Monday. I, I'd love for you guys to check out. Just because I've noticed that doing the live streams is really, really rewarding and amazing conversation and everybody, you know, is discusses and helps each other out. But I noticed a lot of misconceptions and I get a lot of mixes, as you know, to critique and I listen to stuff. And so this I'm going to do a five uh, tips, five mistakes that I hear every single time that are, that are coming that I think is kind of a thing that accumulates from listening to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of mixes, sometimes thousands of mixes. I mean, just in. If you think about it alone, we've been doing the Academy for about two years now, and we review 10 songs a week. So that's 520 a year um, times two is just, that's just 1,040. And then we've done some weeks where we've done over 10. So we're probably coming on about 14, 12 to 1,400 mixes. So... Um, and not just that, but obviously all of the other um, mixes that I listen to and music that gets sent to me. So I'm gonna I'm doing the top five, you know, things that I think really you can improve. So definitely check out Monday's video. There's a, and it, a lot of it comes from the live streams as well and misconceptions and you know hearing people listening to people's comments and I want to sort of like really help improve some of this stuff. Okay, so what is interesting is like the kick itself is all. The so-called quote-unquote samples are actually the live kick. There is no artificial kick put in here. So this, if you if you want to look at this, I'm sorry to say that, that is the same kick as down here. It's just a clean hit sample. So it is the actual kick itself. Um, so it means that we're working with the original material. Now, I don't know what you guys guys and girls think, but I like that. Uh, to me, that sounds like a supernatural kick because even though there is quote-unquote samples, that sample is the live performed kick drum that he played. So I've got a balance now. This is enough for me to work with. This is a big deal for me. You want to listen to the song and get it to a place where you now can decide, well, what do I want to do? Okay, let's do our first giveaway. Um, so our first giveaway is going to be... Um, it's the Auric Wild um, Mixing Rock Volume 2. There's a band called Death of Valley High, and the song's called Ixwitch. This is a really, really amazing course because it's a combination. It's super modern. It's got, like, heavy guitars. It's got programming in it. It's a really great song. So if you don't win it, go and check it out anyway. I'm sure Matt will put up links to it as well. Um, Matt, we should do a discount for it today. That's what we should do. That's what we should do every time we do the giveaways is we should do a discount for anybody who wants to buy it as well. Anyway, so maybe Matt will organize that now. That would be super duper. Okay, um, so what I want to know here is, because um, we talk about live drum recording, a couple of people asked it that. I, I think... I think an obvious question would be like, you know, what is the one mic you couldn't do without? And everybody would have to probably say an SM57. Here we have an RE20. We have a condenser. The kick in, I believe, was an AKG. Um, the 57 is on the top and bottom snare. Um, there's also a 57 combined with a condenser on a hi-hat. So it gets featured heavily. They're also on the front and back of, uh, of the amps. You know, when I interviewed Shelly Akos the other day about microphones, he said he was using 57s on snare drums and on amps and other microphones as well. But he, really interesting stuff. If you notice the other day, well, it's coming up. He's talking about using three different microphones on amps, which I think is very exciting. Um, so I think what I would, what I want to know, I want to know, see, because if I ask that question about that, I think the 57 is the obvious microphone. Um all right, how about this? Is there any piece of equipment? It could be a it could be a microphone, it could be a mic pre, it could be a compressor, it could be anything. Is there any one piece of one piece of gear that you use that is completely goes against the grain? Something that, you know, you can say, Oh, I've got this five dollar microphone I bought at a garage sale that I love on vocals. Is there any left of center piece of equipment, even a plugin? Is there a plugin? Is there a piece of a gear? Is there something that would really excite us to know, 
you know, that you use in a weird situation, plug in, hardware, um, microphone, compressor, EQ, you name it. What is the one piece of equipment, a guitar, something random? What is it that you use that people would not associate with that kind of recording? And if you don't have something, um, what is the airspeed of, 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 of velocity of an unladen swallow? African or European? Um, so the um, so what is it? And is there one piece of equipment? And you can say, oh, Ben Lepstein said an acoustic, acoustic simulator pedal. Uh, you like groove tubes. Groove tubes is great. Um, okay, I use Windows instead of a Mac. Okay, that's that's good. Um, JS saturation plugin on everything. Shaw sure, Prolog twenty four. Uh, Bayer, a uh, biodynamic uh, D50 on hi hat, Radio Shack mic for twenty nine ninety nine. Windows, these are great. We're finding out things about each other. PV Raptor amp from the nineties, nice one. Chinese made Ibanez Les Paul, nice. Johnson acoustic. Got a uh, a chip shaw from the seventies. I use it for background vocals. Yamaha DSP one for old rooms. My bass, Brian May replica guitar. What you mean like my one over there? A uh, copy of a Strat uh, Stratocaster. He's a 58 on a hi-hat. Nice. I use a 57 on a hi-hat. Reaper instead of Pro Tools. Nothing special. You can answer that as well. Contact mics for percussion. Classical guitar. Cheap. MXR Dynacomp. Uh, Gretsch for recording heavy heavy hardcore. Nice. Overdrive uh, inputs. Um, Ebo. Old Casio keyboard. I love this. Crystallizer. AKG C1000. Wow, AKG C1000, yeah. Uh, I was always wondering what happened to those, because you remember that was like the Duragur mic of the 80s and 90s, before Rode came along and changed that industry. Because, look, we have to give a shout-out to Rode. Remember when the NT1 came out? It just changed the industry, because suddenly there was a, a microphone that was about 300 bucks that sounded good. And before that, we had the C1000, and I'm telling you, it was not $300, and it did not sound that good. It's an okay microphone, don't get me wrong. But Rode changed the game. They made an affordable microphone that you could use in every single situation. Now, of course, there's so many great mics. And as you know, I'm a big champion of many, many companies. Uh, PV Rage, Raptor was the guitar. Oops, okay. Stylophone, uh, Bullet Mic for a cheap fuzzy pedal for dirty vocals. A little passive mixer works for me. Uh, Monty Python, yes. <laughs> African or European. Uh, Korg Phaser on vocals, D112 on a blues harp. Nice. You know what? We used to use D in England. We used to use D one twelves on uh, electric guitars. Crown PZMs, nice. Take to the lid of the piano. You know what we used to do with the PZ PZMs is we used to tape them to a side of. You try this out. We tape them to a side of a cabinet, a bass cabinet, and then roll the bass cabinet up to the hi hat, and that was our hi hat mic. Uh, Misa Mancha Tone Forge. Interesting. Um, that's a really nice product. I don't know if it's very left of center, but were you using it for something other than guitars? That's the nice thing about a lot of like amp emulations and simulations, putting them on things that you wouldn't expect them to be on. Emily says, recording acoustic guitar with overhead mics. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. Jonathan says, letting the red lights come on the DOW every now and then. MV2, EOS2, NT1, MG1, old realistic. Oh, the realistic synths. They're going to they're gonna shoot up in value now that we've name-checked those. Uh, FL Studio for mixing and recording non-electronic music. Nice, Martin. Uh, remember, Mick over in Australia does that too. Uh, oh, I like that. Old Tom says, I like groove tubes. You won. <laughs> I love it. Do you know what I said? I always say anything can win. It's done at random. So it's just about sharing knowledge. Just share that knowledge and you can win. Wonderful. All right. So we've listened to it. I think we need to add some super lows and carve out a little bit on the kick. But I think most of the issues I'm hearing in the drums are actually in the room mics. So, you know what, let's go and let's make a, com a complete drum bus of everything. Let's just create, not including the tambourine. I'm not going to throw that in at the moment. So this is the all drums. So I'm going to create a brand new group and call it all with capital letters, drums. And now we're going to sam uh, sample, solo those elements together and have a listen. Okay, Matt's saying, 
Use the code UWI, so all, all wild U W I L D for forty percent off Auric Wild's mixing rock volume, uh, rock volume two course. So anybody who wants to buy that who doesn't win it, doing forty percent off today. So if you want to see how the room mics are, hey, here's a good one for you to do, Eric. Eric. Can you find the um, drum? We did a Robert John and the Wreck recording breakdown at Hybrid Studios. Do you remember? So we did the actual breakdown on the video. In fact, if we could add this on our Instagram stream, that would be really good as well, Matt. So basically, um, we actually did the full breakdown of this recording for you. Um, so you can check it out. So we'll put it up here. Um, Eric will find it, but we'll also put it up on our Instagram story. So for those of you watching this video, you can see how we recorded the song because we did a full breakdown of the recording process. And if you haven't already, by the way, please check out the Ed Cherney uh, thing. I know yesterday was a disaster because all the social media was down, so nobody knew it went up. So it's a bit of a shame because I think it's one of the best videos we've done. Uh, and Ed Cherney's such a great guy. Please, please check that out. It's a really, really, and he's going to do some course stuff with us. So check him out. He's phenomenal. All right, cool. So the overall drum sound I like. Let's go in and identify some of the ugliness. Um, and some of the ugliness is like in these rooms. Um, Cool. So first thing I'm going to do is just grab a trim, uh, a trim here. Um, so we'll do that as a multi mono plugin, uh, depending on what DAW you use. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is a link function up here. You see this link? I'm going to unlink it because I want to turn the left hand side up. See, it's defaulted to left because the moment you can tell it's leaning right heavy. Great. So it's really fantastic drum part. I mean, he did a wonderful job. Andrew really did. Um, we do, worked very, very hard on this. So it's a cool drum sound. It's just a little, oh, it's a little low middly. So now we balance that out. It's quite a long way out. The left-hand side was down 5.1. Uh, db so if once you get into the academy and you download the files don't be afraid to do that don't be afraid to you know even those out um oh great yeah not hardly and also in the academy we did a, a special um ed Cherney. he gave it's it, it was fun it was a fun it was like a 10 minute video where he answered some pretty awesome questions okay so i'm gonna roll off super super lows i want to keep the focus on the low end from the kick drum so I'm getting rid of like the low end inside of these room mics. So I'm taking my high passing and I'm actually gonna make it smoother, make it more gentle of a slope. This is where it defaulted to, you see here. And now I'm actually going to make it a little less aggressive, but I'm gonna bring it up a bit. Bypass. So I like it. I like what it's adding to the, I like what it's adding to the Tom in particular. But the one thing I will say is like, 
this room at Hybrid is a really, really good room. It's very, very accurate. So what I liked about it is I could put the microphones in the room. It's incredibly well designed. It's incredibly, but it's not the livest room. So what I'm going to do now is actually make these room mics bigger than they really are. So let's grab, and we can do, why don't we grab something fun? Let's grab the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which I know many of you love. It's, uh, and I have no affiliation with this company whatsoever. They just make great products. We bought these. We love them. As you can see, there's no NFR here. These are bought and paid for. Great verbs. So I'm bringing the mix down. This is the default at four seconds. Now I'm going to mess with the decay and bring it down. What am I listening for when I'm adjusting the slope? Well, great question, Clay. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I tame and control the low end without like overdoing it because one of the problems with high passing is when it's too aggressive we know we have to high pass you need to high pass it's super super important but getting too aggressive on it is not a smart thing you, you want to be able to just you know control it and especially if you change your mind and you want to boost some low end, you need something there to boost. So what I'm doing is I like to tame things. I don't do sharp kind of like high low pass kind of things like this. I tame areas. I just so enhance, by taming it, you're enhancing the good stuff and you're pulling out gently the bad stuff. I like to tame first. So I like that. That was the default concert hall taken down to 0.72 of a second. We're going to move fast. Now we're going to go to the next stereo pair of rooms. Now we sort of have the opposite problem here. This one's a little uneven as well. So we're going to go to the multi mono again and we're going to go to a trim. Now there's many ways you could do this. You could split this into two monos and gain them differently, but we're not. Again, we're going to turn off the link, but this time we're going to go to the right channel here and turn it up slightly. I'm actually going to copy this EQ down. So... Now I'm going to go to a chorus section and see whether the cymbals are too blown out. They're not. Let's throw in the other room. Not bad. It's a little, uh, it's sort of a little middly. And the symbols are a little going crazy on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a de -esser. And we're doing a less is more here, as you probably noticed. Trying to do as the least amount to keep the integrity of the recording. Let's have a listen to the side chain. So it's definitely it's definitely coping, you hear that? That's pretty painful. So it's definitely controlling some of that high highs there on the cymbals. So that's nice.
Definitely, Scott. I agree. The be- making mistakes is how you learn. Okay, so let's now listen to everything together. Let's go and check out, this is a Prims, this is like a, a crazy mono mic. If you check out the video, um, as Eric said, it's in the description, so you can check out the video afterwards um, of how we recorded the drums and how we recorded the whole band. I like what I was doing to the snare, but I kind of want it to be splatty. You know what I mean? Like, blah, blah, dirty. Let's go and grab the MJUC. You know we love this plugin. It's still, I believe, after all these years, still only $27. Absolutely crazy how good this, this plugin is. So I'm going to go to the fastest release time here. I'm going to compress it. See, it's getting all splatty. Plap, plap, plap. I want that splat, plat, 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 plat. I want it to be ugly. I'm also going for the timbre here, or the timbre, the timbre, depending how you want to pronounce it. I'm going to make it hi-fi, which means kind of less, not kind of, but definitely brighter. I want to hear that bottom snare going, plat, plat, plat. Okay, now I'm going to sidechain it a little bit just to get rid of some of the low lows let that breathe not get rid of but let that breathe right now you know what i'm going to do i'm going to drive it hard It's interesting, when you take it from the compressed to the limit mode, the attack and release time gets faster. Have a listen. Now go back to the compress. Not sure what the difference is there, but there definitely seems to be a slight change in attack and release. Anyway, uh, I'm going to hit it a little harder. Yeah, everybody loves the MJUC. Ever since I started talking about it, I've known so many channels talking about it. It's wonderful. I'm really happy. I just, I've always liked a mono mic that makes a snare go crack, crack, just like ugly. I love the ugliness. Go to that mono there. Okay, so the problem with that mono is it's far too low endy. Uh, I mean, sorry, I only played a nanosecond of it. I'll play it again. Let me just grab a, a full band EQ. Have a listen. It's just muddying up. It doesn't. It doesn't define our low end. Definitely want to bring down the uh, um, DSS. I'm actually going to just pull that one down here. Um, okay, because it's a mono. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a DSS now and just try and control, because the low end and the high end on that is absolutely insane. So this, check out the video of how I recorded the drums and you'll see the positioning. Look how much difference that made with a cymbal. Take it off, have a listen. Totally controlling. Good, Sheila. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Thank you ever so much, um, Josue ZT. ZT. Josue. Um, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. 
I'm going to take a really generic reverb. So I'm going to go for the stock Avid reverb, which you know I love. I'm going to go to a small room at a second. Uh, oh, there it is, 750 milliseconds. And then I think what I might do is grab, just for schnitz and schniggles, grab an R comp and have some fun with it. We're going to do a video on transient shaping because I saw a couple recently were a little confusing. So we'll do one, we'll do one uh, um, soon. So you can you can understand a little bit more here, but. With the default attack and release time here, it gives us a really nice transient. So I'm actually, did you see what I did? I reversed it. So now it goes compressor into reverb. Just slightly, letting the attack go through just a little bit and just slightly exaggerating it. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll double up the same plugin. So the second one is an exaggeration of the first. It's really great. Okay, let's throw all the drums together and have a listen. Yep, crazy talk, Mojo. Crazy talk. Okay. Um, oh, I think we need to do another giveaway. Woohoo! 11.30 already. I'm having too much fun here. Okay, so you see, though, I'm not doing as much. I'm, I'm going to come back to the kick and snare last. Isn't that funny? I balanced the kick and snare so it sounded good to me, but there is zero nada nicked. No EQ whatsoever at the moment going on the kicks and snares because I'm identifying the problem area in the drums, which was low mid build up in the rooms. Rooms not having enough excitement because even though the drum room is big and it's a wonderful drum room, don't get me wrong, it doesn't have a lot of ambience. It doesn't go on the snare drum. It's not. So I'm actually exaggerating my room mics, which is okay. It is okay. The room mics there are to capture a nice, accurate version of the of the drums. Um, so that's a wonderful thing, and it's okay if it's not perfect. Okay, I see we have 348 people watching. Wonderful. Please, or oh, 354, please hit that like button. And we're going to do another giveaway now. So this is giving away Auric Wilds Course, Volume 2. Um, there's also a deal on it in the moment where you can get 40% off on it. Um, do do do. <laughs> Uh, we all hear it the same way. I hear the solo the same. Everything you're hearing, I'm hearing, and vice versa. It was recorded at Highbridge Studios, and you can watch the video of the recording immediately afterwards. The link is underneath the video. And this is to get 40% off the Auric Wild course, which uh, we're going to give away now. Okay, um, I'm going to come back in and do kick and snare stuff and then move on from there. Um, and this is going to be fun. And we'll mix this next week as well um, and to check out, you know, more of it. So I want to throw in the bass just to get some perspective. So I like where the drums are at. The drums are giving us tons of ambience. We're in a good place. But what we don't have is the big, big low of the kick and the snap on the snare quite the way we want it yet. But we've got the elements to do that. Okay, so what do I want to know? Um, hmm. Talking about, you know what? Just dumb question. Here's a dumb question. 
Um, is there any one particular genre that you work in? Is there one genre that you find you're spending most of your time in? Um, and if so, what is it? I mean, what do you record mainly? What do you mix mainly? What is the genre that you find you're working in mostly? And if it's every genre, you can say that. If it's country and hip hop and R&B, then you can say that. If it's only pop, if it's only metal, if it's metal and pop, if it's metal, pop and country, we definitely want to know. The song is called Good Loving by Robert, J., uh, uh, Robert John and the Wreck. It is available inside of the Academy under season three, as Ron was saying. Um, so... Yes, they're all the same files. Yep, these are exactly the same files. We actually, I think, downloaded them from the Academy. Did we download these from the Academy? Yeah. Yes, these are the ones. Actually, he, to find them quickly, he downloaded from the Academy. No one genre. Pop rock, mostly rock, metal, drum and bass. Nice. Metal and hip hop, acid, electro, heavy rock. Um, slide, thrash metal, metal, indie, pop, pop, wave, gothic punk. Love that. Lately, garage band, garage band or garage band, depending on how you want to say it. Mostly pop, piano vocals, rock, country blues, rockabilly, mostly rock and blues, rock and pop, trance, um, psychedelics in my heart, rock, pop, alternative, jazz, hip hop, um, everything except metal, um, rock and sometimes more rock and more rock on top of the rock, rock, indie, folk, bluegrass, um, uh, 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 indie pop dialogue maybe as a boon operator oh nice pop and whatever's in the academy thank you remember these multi-tracks can be downloaded in the academy so if you're not already a member yet please join um, uh, um, do, 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 do. indie death metal R&B practice of anything love prog rock prog rock metal and melodic who said sludge? I don't know, but I like that. Um, you want to intern with me? Did you send an email to Eric? Eric, do you ever produce like a pro email yet? Uh, Matt, could you give Eric a produce like a pro email? He'll probably say, yes, he does. He's not using it. It's probably going to be the response. Stoner Rock says Citizen 9. Punk. Punk. Punk confusion. Funk confusion, sorry. Funk. Clint Rock says Clint. There you go. Um... And Clay says, whatever, ballads, pop rock, rock pedal, uh, rock pedal, rock pedal. That's pop metal, pedal. He does pedal. Turbo Tom just bought Oryx course with a 40% off. Nicely done. Uh, bum, 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 bum. All right, I'm going to get this kick going. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take all of the elements of the kick and I'm going to send them to one bus. And do, 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 do. So it's just come out bus one because there's no stereo there's no stereo of any of these kick mics so now we're going to create so kick bus i often joke about this i call it kiss bus sub aux because people tell to me, ask me, what's the difference between a bus, a sub, and an aux? And I'm like, nothing. So I'm calling this the pick, kick, bus, sub, aux. Kick, bus, sub, aux. Or sub, bus, aux. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So let's mix it without coming out of solo of the whole drum kit. So let's have some fun with that. Why don't we grab... Why don't we grab an all-in-one? Because I know a lot of you use all-in-ones. Um, you know what? Let's go Andrew. Let's grab Andrew's. Uh, why is Andrew's plugin not coming up at the top? We had that defaulted to do that. Did you change something, Eric? Eric. 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 All right. Okay. Where is where is Andrew's Omni channel? Or is it called Shep's Omni? Is that what it's called rather than Omni? There it is. But what it used to be at the top. We had it separated out. Okay, so we're going to use the Omni channel. Don't 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 don't. So if if you remember, as Andrew was telling us, the um. It takes a minute to open it because the first instance 
Dun, 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 dun. Adam's saying Eric. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep it the whole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to saturate it first of all. And remember, we're listening in context of the whole drum kit just for schnizzle. So that really helped, just saturation. Um, I'll try it bypass on and off. Listen to where the presence of the kick, how much better it becomes. The Andrew video is coming out, I believe, April 2nd. So the next thing I'm going to do is have, take look down here. I'm going to add the thump, and I'm going to add 2 dB of thump. So have a listen. Uh, you'll see me turn it on and off. We'll go back. We'll go back a bit. Uh, we'll find a section of the song where it's playing a little bit more here. Espen says, "The Omni Channel puts a beard on your mix. Nice." I mean, that's pretty tasty, isn't it? I mean, that's just doing two things on the kick drum, adding 2 dB of thump um, and then adding some saturation. I mean, that's all we did. And we didn't come out of, we didn't come out of soloing the whole kit so we can hear what it says on its own. Now, that's the nice thing that Andrew did is he defaults to EQs that we like. Uh, like EQ points that we like. So here it's at 351. That's a nice low mid to pull out. So let's pull out some of that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of compressions. Check it out. We've got a VCA, FET, or op Opto. See, what's interesting is as soon as you touch the threshold, it engages it. Lots of red lights going off. Anybody complaining about that yet? Oh, I like it. I like it with the red lights on. It's interesting. You see it on here, but you're not hearing it on here. Let's engage the limit. prefer it without the limit. Gotta love it. So what have we done? Not a diddly lot. We just done smart things. So we saturated it. 
Then we added 2 dB of thump on the low lows. Then we didn't do anything with the gate, nothing with the de And then we engaged a little bit of cut at 350. And then we engaged some compression between 3 to 4 dB most of the time. Increased the output, and that was it. So nice. Very nicely done. I mean, we could add a little bit of low, but I think the thump is doing this. So, all right. And that's just that was just listening to it um, in context of the whole drum mix. Now, just for schnitz and schnegels, let's listen to the drum, ele the kick elements with and without the channel on. See, that, that low end is really, really long, but I like it. If we don't have that long low end in other instruments, it won't matter, but I do like it. Now, if we want to create some just some ambience just on that, why don't we take, uh, why don't we take one of the elements, like maybe this kick here. Why don't we take that and send to another bus and just create, a little bit of room ambience just for that just so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, make this obviously three and four kick verb and put a bit of EQ on that so I'm going to roll off some low lows you know We'll go to about three, four hundred. We don't have to go quite so Abbey Road on it. We don't need the clicky top end. There's actually a part of me that thinks probably the best thing to do using that element of the kick is actually put a DS on it first, strangely enough. So I'm going to DS what's going into it just to reduce some of the clickiness. Um, and then I've taken off, I've lowered and high passed it. And now I'm going to pick a reverb. And I don't know if I need to go that crazy. I think I'm just going to pick... Um, I think I'm just going to pick a D verb, something really, really obvious. And I'm going to go down to, I'll take a room at about a second. Far too bright. That's why I wanted a DSA. So it's getting there. Okay, so let's do a little bit to the uh, the snare. We've got about 10 minutes left. So we'll do some fun stuff with the snare. We're going to take all of those elements of the snare and create. We did a, a rough blend, as you remember, at the beginning. Now we're going to create a um, do, do, do its own snare bus. What's going on here? Sorry about that. Um, so... Stereo auxiliary. Although I think all the elements are mono. This is just in case I want to add some of the ambience to it, but we'll see. So this is going to be our snare bus. And I'm not ruling out creating a full drum bus. I could have called that bus sub auxiliary just to really help everybody out. Um, so now I'm going to take those elements 
of the snare here. I'll call that snare group just to really make things clear. And then let's let's do the same thing. Let's grab Andrew's plugin. Why the heck not? Do 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 do. So it's the Shep's Omni Channel. Grab the channel. What's the first thing I'm doing? I'm going to use the saturation. I've already cranked it. I'm going to go to even and see what happens. Why does that sound better on even? Is that my imagination? I'm closing my eyes. I don't know why the high mids sound slightly better, but they do. I could be imagining it, but that sounds better to me. Okay, so um, I am going to go now, see where this is defaulting. So it's 8K here on the highs, and on the mid range, it's at 20, about 3K. So um, let's go, and down here we're on 92. Let's go about uh, 120, 130, and do a little boost. Oh, I like that a lot. Listen to that difference. I'm going to bypass. That's great. That saturation and that low boost. Listen to the snare difference. Two tiny things that we did. Now, obviously, the saturation has increased the volume, but the low end, but you can hear the folding into a little bit. Definitely volume is helping there, but, and I can tell the perceived volume is obviously making it, but look, the low end, you know, it can adjust, we can adjust the volume all day we like, but you can hear how much better it is. But I do want to go in and boost some of that 8K here. Now I'm going to turn the compressor to effect, basically meaning an 1176, because that to me is the best snare compressor ever. All right, let's fold the whole thing in together. Really digging this.
Well, the thing, it's not, it's not a 400 build up, Kevin, but there is definitely more air on the kick than you would normally anticipate with stuff that I do. Have a listen. Got a ooh, ooh. I agree, I'm thinking of adding some extra verb on the snare, but we also printed live verb, so I might do it. Oh yes, Arthur did do the Icelandic death metal version of this song. Thank you, Sergio. Yeah, it's kind of a less is more. We haven't done any individual EQing on any of the snares or any... Oh, that's not true. We did a little bit on the snare, but we just, we grouped stuff and EQ'd it. Andrew did do another nice little uh, video for us as well, so you should check that out. It's coming out April 2nd. So let's have a listen to what we did is we printed a 480 and an SPX uh, 90 while we were there live. Horrible uh, clipping on that. I don't like that. That's not very nice, is it? Some editing that needs to be done on that. Hmm. Not a big fan of that. Yep, there's some there's some editing that needs to be done on that. It wasn't done very well. Hmm. Yes. Okay. It's a whole other discussion. All right. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to create my own um, my own individual reverberation. So snare. Reverb. I'm going to do, you know what? I was going to say I'm going to do the Abbey Road trick. Why don't I just get the Abbey Road reverb? And we're going to do one more giveaway. And this re uh, this giveaway, whose tune is this? It's Robert John and the Wreck. It's available in the Academy. It's in season three of one of 49 multi tracks that we have inside of the Academy. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the elements and send to it. So I think I'm going to take. Uh, uh, um, hmm. Because we squashed this here for the snare, and then we have the D twenty. Let's have a listen. That might be good. Why the heck not? So we're going to send that. So seven and eight. We'll make it seven and eight. There's quite a lot of delay on that, so let's mess with this. So I brought that down to 64th. Oh wow, what a huge change between the MK2Hs and the KM. Much prefer that. I mean, I'm a KM53 fanatic, but those are really nice. Hear the difference? Let's throw that in the mix. You know, that's a really good sounding plugin. And you guys and girls have been telling me to use this, and it's been in my arsenal, and I've only recently started using it. I mean, that is one of the best, most natural sounding reverbs. Sounds like a record straight away. All I did was reduce the delay, the pre-delay on the, on the reverb, and I changed the mic, and I kept it on the chamber, and that sounds like a record to me.
That is a really, 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 really good reverb. And I love how dumb it is and how it just looks so good. And I haven't even changed the bottom end or the cut or anything. I haven't wanted to. Wow, really excited. Okay, we'll do our last giveaway. This is it. So not only is this a giveaway of Oryx course, and for those of you that, um, for those of you that um, uh, aren't aware, we're also doing forty percent off his course. Um, yeah, these Abbey Road chambers and plates are amazing. Um, so, hmm, I think that. What? All right. What's your favorite reverb? What's your favorite plate? What's your favorite chamber? What's your favorite um, hall, room? What is it? What is your favorite reverb plugin? Reverberation plugin. What is your favorite one? Let us know. Um, and you can win um, Oryx course. You can win a free copy of that and also a one year, um, a one year membership to the Academy. If you're already an Academy member, you can, um, if you're already an Academy member, you can choose any course you like. All right, I'm going to send pre-delay because somebody wants to hear the reverb on its own. So this is pre-delay. This is just the reverb on its own. You, you can email uh, support at Produce Like a Pro if you want to intern. So what verbs are we using? Uh, Slape, verb, sweet, Abbey Road, plates. Suddenly it's the Beatles. Um, yeah, I love it. Totally honest. You stock Ableton, Acaseling, some Valhalla, Brainworks, R verb, um, I-K-C-S-R for verbs. Um, -da 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 -da. I don't know what you're talking about, Dan. Yeah, there's a ring on the snare. I like it. Um, Bricasti, M7, um, the verb seat. Abbey Road plates, but maybe what you're listening on uh, is it is exaggerating some frequency. Uh, Rematrix UVI pa uh, might reamp in the shower. Yeah, great one. Isotope Lex 480 H verb um, stock reverb D verb Abbey Road chamber um, and oh Boss RV6 pedal. Uh, da, 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 and Valhalla little plate stock Cubase ambience fantastic da, 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 da. so congratulations um, to um, who won it Vutal congratulations that's really really wonderful um, really happy for you um, and happy for everybody that's took part and really, really helped. This is really fantastic. Everybody who's being super positive and helpful here, it's really, it's a great place. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we have very few experts here that are telling us we're doing it wrong, just the occasional ones. <laughs> 
we're just making it up as we go that's what's so beautiful about mixing that's what is so beautiful about making music is that it is available to everybody it's a beautiful time to be making music we're very blessed and remember some of the best records in the world the ones that we grew up listening to were made by people with little or no experience but they had a lot of creativity um for instance you know jeff emmerich was 19 20 years old when he was making uh, albums with the Beatles. It's absolutely amazing. When he did Revolver, he was turning 20. So please join us in the Academy. These are the multi-tracks in the Academy here that we're featuring. It's absolutely wonderful having you all here. Congratulations to everybody that won something. I really, really appreciate it. Um, do I mix live recordings from shows? Yes, that's coming up soon. And if you haven't, on your way out, please hit the like button. It really means a lot. To, to have people like what we do. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to get Ulrich's course. Um, it's 40% off. Um, and yeah, you all guys and girls absolutely rock. It really means a lot to have such a supportive academy here. Really fantastic. Please hit that like button. I see you have 290 likes, 300 plus people liking uh, watching. Please hit the button, hit the like. At the end of this, go and uh, comment, and don't don't forget to check out the video link underneath of the actual breakdown of this recording, so you can see how we're recording all the mic placements, all of the mic pre's that we we're using. People ask us about the mic pre's we we're using. We used a bit of everything, some BAE stuff, some other stuff. Check out the video. Of course, leave loads of comments and questions. It's absolutely amazing to have you all here. See you all in the academy. Those are academy members. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and we'll be back with another live stream on a Tunes day on Tuesday oh and of course tomorrow morning we have a live stream for all the academy members where we do all the mixed critiques so join us in the academy tomorrow morning see you all again very soon have fun bye